everyone, it's Marley, third year med student. If you're new here, hi, welcome. I just recently finished my family med rotation. So now it's time to tell you about it and do a recap like I've done with my you know, previous OBGYN, psych, and IR rotations. This recap should honestly be pretty short and uh, straightforward. Videos like this one are for those of you who are interested in family medicine or are doing this rotation soon to get a better idea of what to expect. So you have a general sense. So a recap like this will include talking about the different things I got to do or see, how my expectations for the schedule and the content of the rotation matched up to reality, and a kind of sense of the types of people that go into the specialty just based on my exposure to the people in the field. Stick around to the end. I have some miscellaneous thoughts and especially if you are doing this rotation soon or in the future, uh, some thoughts on how I studied for this particular shelf. It's a really tough one. So watch to the end for that. Okay, let's get rolling. So what I got to do and see, literally I didn't even bother making a list for this one because the variety is so insane. In a given day, you'll see everything from like croup to hypertensive emergency and, you know, runny nose to, hey, my blood sugar's in the 400s. Like, you just, you just never know. Uh, the only procedure that I got to do, it's not really technically a procedure, it's a pap smear. I got to do one in office. Um, and so other than that, it's not a super hands-on type of specialty, right? It j d depends. Depends. Like if you're in rural family medicine and you're, you you end up doing probably a lot more as far as like procedures go, doing stuff with your hands. Where I was in like suburban and urban outpatient clinics for the most part, which I'll talk about in a second, is mostly medical management, not a whole lot of like procedural. With the exception of, I was able to work with a bunch of DO doctors. You know, there's MD, MDO medical schools, right? So I'm at an MD school, but I worked with a bunch of DOs during this rotation, which was really cool because I got to see how they do OMT, which is osteopathic manipulation treatment. It's some massage technique, but with like joint manipulation for certain treatment specific purposes. It's really interesting. And obviously I don't know much about it because it's only taught at DO schools and I'm at an MD school. I was able to see how OMT really benefited a lot of people without having to undergo like invasive treatment or take on more medications or anything like that. If we can fix people's problems with fewer pills, fewer injections and, you know, surgery and things like that, I'm all for it. And honestly, I wish we learned it at MD schools because it seems to be beneficial for a lot of patients. Now moving on to like environments and clinical settings, like where was it? So we rotated to a bunch of different locations and settings. Mostly I was in like outpatient clinic settings, suburban, urban, kind of all over the place. But then there is one week where I was at like a hospital base, like inpatient admission service. Family med doctors in a hospital are coordinating the care for a, one patient with all the other consultants and specialists and basically being the cat herder and <laughs> make sure that the patient gets in and out as efficiently as possible and that everyone's on the same page. A inpatient was definitely intense, more intense than outpatient. As far as expectations versus reality of the content of the rotation, obviously if you're doing family med, you're gonna expect quite a bit of variety. You're gonna see a lot of different stuff, right? Like I said, making a, a list of everything that I got to see is essentially useless because it was kind of everything. They'll come in and, and, and your chief complaint is cough, but then they'll start telling you about their shoulder pain and how, oh, their blood sugar was in the 200s yesterday and they haven't been able to refill their metformin because uh, their pharmacy closed down and it's been three months since they've been able to like go on a walk and then they'll ask you to check out their kid that they brought along even though the kid doesn't have an appointment and it's just like what? like it can be kind of disorienting um and stressful <laughs> this is gonna sound terrible but when i was about to start family medicine i was very worried first of all i was coming off the high of my ir elective rotation which if you go watch that video uh had an amazing time so I was coming off that high and then going into a very clinic heavy specialty. And you'll notice in my IR video, I noticed how I really liked having, you know, one morning of clinic a week. <laughs> that, was, that was plenty for me. And then going into this almost entirely outpatient clinic based uh, specialty, family medicine, I was very worried that I was going to hate it. And I actually ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would just because of how much you were able to see on a given day. It was cool because we had a significant amount of autonomy. That's something that I didn't really have in IR because obviously it's it's so technical and so specialized. 
I really don't have much of a background or skills to contribute a ton in an IR setting or an IR suite. So family medicine was different in that I was able to, you know, show up and then they'd say, okay, which two patients do you want to take today? And then I'd be like, okay, I, I haven't seen this before and I haven't seen this before. And so I'll go see them before the resident or doctor that I'm working with goes in to see them. So I get, you know, the history, I do the exam and I come back and, and tell the findings and give them the rundown of what's going on before the resident or doc ever sees them. So it was really cool to have at least that bit of autonomy and get practice like the, you know, quote unquote doctoring skills where, you know, you go in and talking and communicating, getting the necessary information from the patient in a focused way, establishing a good connection with the patient so that they'll be able to feel comfortable telling you everything that's going on and learning how to like lead the conversation in such a way that you get all the information you need and they feel heard and that their uh, concerns are being addressed but without the appointment dragging on for an hour and uh, making sure that you're getting to the heart of the problem that needs to be addressed that day. So it was really good to get practice with those kinds of soft skills. And that I would argue is one of the more difficult things to master in a fast paced clinical setting like in family medicine. Now, as far as expectations versus reality of the schedule goes, for the most part about what I expected. You know, family medicine, you're not generally working nights or weekends. Shortish days for the most part, usually like nine to four, eight to, three-ish. Inpatient week though was more intense. That was more like nine to 10 hour days, like 7 a.m. to four. Overall, not bad at all. As far as the types of people that go into family medicine, I freaking love the people that I worked with. Okay, these are like salt of the earth types. These are absolutely brilliant people. I know people say neurosurgeons are, you know, the smartest people in the hospital. I call BS on that. Just about every single family medicine doc I have met not only knows the ins and outs of every single common condition and medication like the back of their hand, they can also pick up on the zebras like that, could repeat like the updated USPSTF guidelines in their sleep. They make navigating extremely complex patients and situations seem like a breeze and make an art form out of patient communication. Seriously, they are masters of establishing good relationships and focusing conversations on where they need to go without making patients feel rushed. That is so hard to do. Certainly neurosurgeons are very smart, but there is a whole other side of smart. Communicative genius, that is the realm of family med docs, I think. I'm sorry, but I've never met a neurosurgeon that had a decent bedside manner. <laughs> Okay, maybe maybe like one, but but really, I mean, it's just they're brilliant in other ways. They're a different kind of brilliant. I think uh, family medicine uh, people are more of a well-rounded brilliant. How about that? I know I'm going off here, but really, I I truly think that family med is the most undervalued field in medicine. I do not think they get paid nearly enough for the work that they do. Primary care is the front line and the glue that, in a lot of ways, holds our current system together and. Family medicine is at the core of that. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people kind of like hate on family medicine as like, oh, the thing that people go into when they can't match into anything else. Like, what? Anyone who tries to throw shade like, oh, I'm just going into family medicine or oh, only people who like barely graduated or like didn't do well on their boards, like going to family medicine. You can catch me outside or take it back because that is so messed up and is not true. And clearly I get very protective of them because they often don't get the credit they deserve for the work that they do, which is incredibly important. So there's my rant on that. Anyway, family med people love you. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not absolutely freaking amazing. Okay, there, end of rant. Last thing I wanted to mention quickly before wrapping up here is how I studied for this family medicine shelf exam because it's known for being especially unpredictable in its content. I mean, it makes sense. The amount of material covered by family medicine is absolutely insane, but then you only get 90 questions on the shelf. You're bound to get stuff on this exam that you've never seen before and or study a bunch of stuff that never shows up on the exam. It's infuriating either way, but it is what it is. I took a very like slow and steady approach because I wanted to get through both the ambulatory and the family medicine subsections of U World, because there are two, and both of them are extremely helpful. It's about like 800 questions total. So I did 15 U World questions a day, and I did 25 new Anki cards from the step two family medicine shelf on King deck. Then I did a couple of NBME practice exams two days before the exam itself. And I felt like I had a pretty good handle on things. Like you've got to know all the USPSTF guidelines. You've got to know like hands down all the screening protocols for major stuff, colonoscopies, PAPs, all the vaccine schedules, stuff like that. You got to know those cold, those show up all over the exam. But despite, you know, I did a lot of prep. I 
really worked hard from day one to make sure that I was on top of a really good studying schedule for this rotation with the Anki and the UWorld and the NBMEs and I did some more like AMBOSS sprinkled in at the end just for good measure. I still, yeah, saw a bunch of stuff on there where I was like, what? <laughs> Over my head, completely something I'd never even heard of before. Then all like stuff that I really, really thought was going to be heavy hitters and high yield on this exam barely showed up. It's very frustrating, but at least I knew that that was the case kind of going into the exam. Don't let it demoralize you. If you're going in there and you take this exam, just know it's going to be unpredictable like that. So don't freak out if you see something that you've never seen before. Just be like, I knew this was coming, <laughs> you know, brace yourself and just move through it. And I ended up doing just fine on the exam. Don't worry about it. Chances are, if you've never seen it, most other people that you're taken with haven't seen it either. So don't stress too much. Just know it's unpredictable and brace yourself for that. Just do the best you can. It's going to be fine. That's all I have to say about that. And that's it for the family medicine recap. If this style of recap was helpful for you, or maybe you have some other like questions that you would like answered when I do future recaps, please let me know. Comment down below. Shoot me a DM on uh, Twitter or Instagram. I just want to be able to give people what they like for upcoming videos and future recaps. Speaking of future recaps, my next rotation is going to be surgery. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. I am extremely nervous for it. So if you've already done this rotation, please share <laughs> any advice that you have. Because your girl is bracing herself for what might be a rough eight weeks. So <laughs> I'll take all the help I can get. And while you're in the comments, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share this around with your medically inclined friends and family. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and catch you next time.